friends today, huh? Welcome. Um, Coach, you guys haven't had college game day in, in College Park since 2005. We've talked all year about not letting the team get too high or too yeah. low. How do you handle that with the team, just all this excitement and buzz going on around uh, College Park right now? Yeah, um, to me, college game day is about, um, uh, it's about, it's a great day for our program. You know, so it gives us a lot of notoriety. It's, it's a really great day for our program. Um, we've earned it. That's what's pretty cool about it. It wasn't just given to us, so we've earned it um, by our play. And, um, and then for me, it's really about the fan base, okay? Um, you know, for us, if I didn't have to show up tomorrow, I wouldn't, but I, but I, I will because it's good for our program, and I'll do that. And, um, uh, but our guys won't do a lot tomorrow with it. They'll show up for a little bit, go back, it's 8 o'clock game, get our rest. So it's really about the fan base. It's really exciting for them. It's, it's really cool. It's really, and it's really a cool thing. You know, you think about, I don't know how many times they do it a year and how many programs there are. And to be able to have it, is, is, it's great for our program, great for our fan base. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jackledge Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information, find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. Coach, uh, looking back um, the other night, two days later, what's your big takeaway from that win in Minnesota? Well, that we just don't quit. We don't quit, and we battled through a lot of things that it just felt like nothing was really kind of going our way. We just kept battling, so um, it's a good win. We, we've moved on. I know a lot of guys want to talk about it, but we, you know, we, we, we've moved on for that. We, we were, obviously, it was a hugger in the locker room, but, you know, when we, when we got home yesterday, we just, we've moved on, and, and we're really proud of our effort, and we continue to figure it out, but we got to focus on on the, on the next next game. How have you guys handled the quick turnaround and having kind of these three Yeah, it's been week? great. Yeah, we, we've probably not going to get as much practice time as I'd like for these guys, but the good thing is we just played them two weeks ago. So um, they've, had, they've only had two games since then, so I'm sure Coach Izzo will have a few new plays in there for us uh, tomorrow night. But um, quick turnaround, only playing them two weeks, really, two weeks ago really helps. So um, we'll be ready. We'll be rested. We'll be ready. It's uh, – you know, we're at home, so that helps too. Mark, given between the last game and even going back to that Indiana game on the road <coughs> last month, how happy have you been with how you guys have handled end game situations, and how much time do you guys spend on those specific yeah, situations? Yeah, not as much as you think, but um, we practice every day of being a great defensive team and a great execution team. Really, that's what it comes down to. Um, I like those situations always have um, as a coach. But you have to be really good and you also have to be very fortunate. So um, in some situations we've been fortunate, some situations we've just been really good. Um, but yeah, our guys have been terrific um, in those games and that's why we are where we are. You know, but got to keep doing it and it uh, gives us confidence. Uh, but it's really just a will that, that they have to keep competing and fighting and uh, locking in. Because when my guys are locked in, you know, they're really good, and they're locked in on their assignments defensively, they're locked in with their assignments offensively, and, you know, we're, we're pretty good. Marvin, with it being Cowan, Sticks, Daryl you know, it doesn't matter if it's a last second shot. It seems like you trust anybody on your team to go and make that shot. How do you build that trust over the season yeah. to continue moving forward? Well, it's it was really kind of cool to see, and you got to give Minnesota credit. They guarded Anthony well, then they guarded Wiggs well. Those are the two you thought were going to shoot it, and they both gave it up. And Daryl stepped up. Our, you know, and, and you, Eric Isle has made big shots in his career. Wiggins has made big shots. Dante Scott made some incredible big shots in that game the other night. So, just just who our guys are. We, you know, we're a pretty balanced team, and and we have confidence in everybody. And we try to go to certain guys through our offense, but it's really hard this time of year to run a play and have it work because you're so well scouted. So it really comes down to guys just doing stuff out of your offense uh, to make plays. But we're confident. All our guys are confident. With kind of where you guys are in the league and, and knowing you could clinch a 
bunch of title. I, I know you guys probably don't talk about it, but the guys are smart enough to know yeah. what's there. How, how do you manage that? Well, we, we're going to handle it the same way we've handled everything. It's about Michigan State. We, we don't get too high. We don't get too low. We're going to lock in on Michigan State and, um, and do the best we can tomorrow night. We talk about small opportunities lead to big ones. So tomorrow's game won't smell, feel like a you know, small opportunity, but um, it's Michigan State. We just got to lock in on them and try to figure out a way to win the game, and then the rest takes care of itself. So that's kind of how we've approached it. We don't talk about it. We're all aware of it, what's going on. Um, and we've been aware of it since we've had the lead in the league because it just became a big deal. When you're down one or two games, it's not, you know, it's, it's a big deal, but it's not a big deal. All of a sudden you're in the league, which we have been for like five games now. It becomes a big deal. So we're aware of it, but our guys have done an incredible job of just locking in uh, to, to the task at hand. The task at hand tomorrow is Michigan State. Coach, what are you emphasizing with your guys to slow Xavier Tillman down more this time around? Well, we'll see. I mean, he's a heck of a player. Um, they got a lot of really good players. They got a pretty good, darn good coach, um, too. And so we'll, we'll do the best we can on him. Um, uh, you know, we'll have a game plan. If it doesn't work, we'll adjust it like we did the other night and uh, keep trying to figure it out. What would help us if we can keep guys out of foul trouble. Being at home, hopefully that'll, that'll help us tomorrow night. But um, you never know, and you just got to be ready to adapt. But he's a heck of a player. He's a physical player. He can score inside, he can score out, so, so we'll see. You guys take a lot of pride in defending Michigan State. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. No, go ahead. He's next. He's Michi got Michigan State defends as well as anybody in the league yeah. with yourselves. What makes them such a special team on that side of the floor? Well, they're well coached, obviously. They, 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 they prepare well for you, and um, they'll be prepared for everything. They always guard as, as well or better than anybody in the league. Um, and they have smart players. You, can, you have to have smart players to be good on both ends of the floor. And um, they have intelligent players that, that do a good job of adjusting and recognizing situations and, and doing it quickly. So, um, and, you know, they work hard at it. You know, and they're physical at it, and, and so it's, I think our whole league guards, I thought Minnesota just guarded the heck out of us. I thought Ohio State just guarded the heck out of us. I mean, I can go on and on. Just, I think everybody, I think Iowa really guarded us. So it's just, it's really good coaches with really good players. It makes it hard, but Michigan State, you know, year in and year out, it's one of the tops for sure. Did you, two more guys. did you uh, happen to see Chris Holtman's comment last night yeah. about, about the 90s? I heard about it. Yeah, good for him. He was making fun of me. He was mad at me, so that's all right. Hey, I deserved it. <laughs> what does it mean for you, not only the support you get here from the crowds, but to have your players know that a family of six drove eight hours to see you guys yeah. play in Minnesota and, and the guys were able to, to get together with them? The yeah, game. I mean, a family of six and the oldest was like eight. You know, so I looked at the mom and I'm like, you're going straight to heaven. Like, you're, you're incredible. This is, and she, she looked tired and it was a late game and she was, they were waiting for us. So I was like, are these all yours? And um, no twins. Uh, it was pretty amazing. But yeah, it's just, you know, when you go on the road, you see that a lot. People go out of their way to three hours, four hours, eight hours is a lot with that young family. Hopefully they spent the night and went home the next day. But didn't look like the mom and the kids had much much of a choice. The dad was <laughs> making sure that worked, so he's, it was it was cool. I'm glad our guys got to spend time with them. Thanks, guys. That's it. All right.